Hey everyone, welcome back over to the shop. We got Salty sitting here on the jig. We need to get it bolted down. Alex and I were over here the other night already working on getting the rear end out of it. But we did get a whole bunch of parts in and I kind of run over the plan for the build and kind of what we got going on and where we're headed with everything because I know a lot of you have been asking. So kind of show you what we got here. So to go along with the front tubular kit that I showed you guys before, rock solid, I got this cover here for the trans tunnel from where it was poking a little hole in it, right somewhere in there. So we're gonna get that all patched up. Also, we got the subframe connector. So that's part of the reason for getting the car up on the jig here is we gotta weld the subframe connector from here over to there on the frame rail. So then we can tie the chassis to it. Got some Flowtech headers for the turbo build that we'll be talking about. I still gotta get some turbos coming, stuff like that. Willwood brake so we can get rid of all of this old brake. It's got all the stock stuff. Even the rear brakes were all sanded down. And that was just kind of a mess. Not the not the safest thing, but a lot of F-Body people will sand the actual physical caliper to get wheels to fit. And we got a massive order from Holly. So this is pretty cool. I'm gonna pop this open real quick, show you guys what's in here. So there it is. Bright red Holly Dominator. So this is actually the lightweight one. What do you think about that, huh? That's what I need on the Buick, I guess. Save a few pounds. Pretty cool. But yeah, it's a full dominator, and that's just kind of their new deal that saves a couple pounds and a little bit lighter case or whatever, but it is bright red, so it stands out quite uh, quite strong there. The J2 connector, so the car will have dual O2s on it, and then we're also gonna do the eight EGTs, so we'll have EGTs in each cylinder to watch over data, so then we can just kind of verify, like we had on the Buick, when we were watching bank to bank, so we can really see what's going on. It's something we kind of learned watching all the data there. It'd be nice to have that second source of data to really know what's going on, and then, I got a whole bunch of new sensors and everything that we'll be adding to the car. Another harness. Those are the 202 sensors. Um, new map sensor. And then transducers, sensors for like dome pressure, all that stuff. And then what's this? Another another transducer. Here is the eight EGTs. It's pretty cool. It comes with this little box. The EGT module that it will connect to it as well. So we'll have this and then next to the dominator mounted. And then this adds all the EGTs. So here is the eight EGTs that get welded into the headers on all of that stuff. And then here's the smart wire kit that so it comes with the harness to have all the good coils on it, getting away from all the factory, getting away from all the factory coils and everything on this thing. So with everything else we're doing, might as well upgrade all of the ignition system. With going to a new engine, a new combo, everything fresh, I wanted to go to step up the ECU so we have more data because I was almost out of inputs on the HP. I could have went to one of their like expansion modules, but I wanted to just go ahead and get a whole new setup and get the uh, dominator in this thing. So we'll have all that. And then also what we're doing, since you guys remember when we cut everything out and tore all the main harness out of it. So we got this race pack. So this is really a cool system. When I was talking to the guys at Holly and telling them kind of the plan for the build, they're like, well, what are you doing for wiring this thing? I said, well, that's still trying to figure that out. And they said, this is what you should use. So it's a, actually a race pack. You hook up the main power here and then it gives you this whole harness which is really cool it comes with like a little mount and stuff like that but here's the harness it plugs into the race pack and then it gives you everything you pretty much need to wire out the car everything's already labeled right turn uh front lights and then there's like turn front tip and then third brake light it's pretty much all pre-wired for everything that a car has so so then that brings us to why the car is over here at the shop and that's to get this thing updated. So with the new power plant and all that stuff, the car will need a funny car cage in it. So it'll have the full funny car hoop. And then I need to add some kicker bars here, X the doors, a dash bar. I don't know if the top gets X or at least there's a diagonal bar, a few gussets added. And then it needs a full bar that goes across here. And then underneath the car, like I said, we'll have those subframe connectors and then the bar that goes across here will go down into the floor and tie into the subframe connectors. So quite a few bars that we got to add to get it to a 25.5 cert. So a 25.5 certed cage gets you certified to go up to 750s. Right now the car is legal to go 850s. And that's what we're shooting for is trying to go mid sevens, mid high sevens, I guess. I really would love the car in drag and drive type events to be able to go a seven at every track. So that's kind of what we're going to shoot for. 
and plan for and that's all the parts that we're getting is to do that and here in this big box i want to leave it in here but i'll throw up a few pictures on the screen this is the fuel and ice water tank from rockslaw motorsports the guys over there are awesome they sent me some pictures during the build of it and then he also said be careful pulling that thing out of the box and try not to scratch it all up because it's really really nice so we're just going to leave it in here until it's ready to be mounted in the back got to get the rear end completely pulled out of the car because also it needs to get shortened up we're going to get we're shortening the rear end up about three inches so then we can actually put a double bead lock on the car so these brakes actually use a different axle end it's a big ford axle end instead of the stock f body axle end so all that's getting switched around as well and with that fuel tank we can go ahead and ditch the factory still fuel tank in this thing too alex what's up buddy i'm much oh shoot so we're working on getting the rear end out of this thing we got most of it unbolted we got the anti-roll bar out alex is working on a brake line we got the parking brakes released uh just got to get the coil overs undone and then i already unhooked the uh torque arm as well so I'll try to get the whole rear end slid out of here what's next all right let's just slide her back a little bit and see where we get hey man that thing is so heavy yeah, some of it's a freaking nine. <laughs> yeah. Steel intersection, factory brakes, all the heavy stuff. Uh -huh. Now it's time to get the old factory fuel tank out of there. Ready, Alex? No. I know, huh? I already got the straps undone. Now just to see what it does. Okay. The pressure off. Okay. Let's see if the tank wants to go. They don't feel too too heavy. It smashes down. Okay. I'm just taking it slow. Yep, perfect. Okay, well, now we're catching on to something over there. It's the woods. Hold your end of the tank, and I'm going to slide the jack this way, which is going to let your end lower slow. That's what, like, the filler neck, it's got that, like, plastic. I can kind of see it from here. It's like it's got to be angled just right to get through there. I don't know what that plastic piece, it's like on the filler neck. It's like it's kind of busted and loose on there. Yeah. Oh shit. I got it. Gas cap just popped off too. Oh, that's great. Okay. Well, as long as you can bring it my way and we can set it down somewhat nice. I'm not going to Okay, the cap of the gas cap just broke off. Oh, just the top of the cap? Yeah. Oh. No big deal. Got it, gas tanks out. All right, so did a little time jump on you guys, came over the other night and just got some belts and stuff out of here, cleaned up a few things inside the car to get ready for the cage to go in. I actually ended up selling the fuel system out of it. I wanted to show you guys, I thought it's kind of interesting that you can see the uh, torque arms bent there. So we'll probably go into some sort of a different torque arm. Alex is here. What up? <laughs> so the plan for today is to finish getting everything pulled out of the car, work on getting the headliner out of here, and then I'm going to start cutting these bars out. So with the new cage, we don't need a few of these bars, like these down ones, that it'll get a new bar there. And then I think this bar gets a little bit bigger. We'll look at the spec book here in a minute to verify, but all that stuff gets cut out, and then new bars of different sizes go in in a little different configuration. I'm just working on getting the door panel off. I'm going to try to get all this crap out of here so once we start cutting and making sparks, we don't make fuego. And then I'm not sure if those door panels are ever going to go back on. Probably not. I'd like to do just a thin piece of carbon on the door panels, just maybe a switch or put the switch in the car for the windows or whatever, because I would like to keep the power windows. Talking to some guys, they said the power windows really aren't any heavier than the mechanical windows with the mechanism and all that. Sad day. I think we got to get rid of the old Boston acoustics. Sound system. Yep. Dang it. Pretty much got the door gutted with wiring so we can pull it all the way back through because we're getting rid of this whole harness. And this is the only plug we'll probably end up reusing. It's this little brown and blue wire that plugs onto the motor. Uh, so this will run into the car. One way to lose a lot of weight is just run this thing without doors because them are heavy units right there. So now we just got to get the harness back through and then we can finally get rid of pretty much a harness then we'll jump over and knock out that door real quick all right let's see if we can smoke it with a 20 volt hopefully this is a semi-dead 20 volt
Whoop, that's up. Wrong so way. Flip it. <laughs> this thing's gonna rip on 20 volts. <laughs> yeah, so just barely touch it. Just a little bit. Just a hair. There. Hey, <laughs> nailed it! Good job. That worked perfect. There you go. No problem. Bring her down. And there we go. There is two doors now on. see through. Perfect. It's like a Jeep. Jeep things. So both doors are now off. Got all this wiring loose. I can knock them out now. And uh, pretty stripped. Salty has never been this stripped down ever since the day I've owned it. I've never pulled the car apart this far. So it's kind of crazy. It's like literally rebuilding the entire car again. Reusing some of the parts I have. <laughs> had previously so yep here we go well that's what you get whenever you ask me to help you yeah i'll just go over and just go take it apart <laughs> teach them to put it back together now <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys have never seen it this is an sfi book it has all the requirements and specs and everything for roll cages this is for 750 to 850 25 5 design stock or modified oem floor pan which this car has a fully stock OEM floor pan, so that does save us from having to put a few bars in this car. You go through all the reference points and everything, and you go back to the back usually. And so here is kind of the main figure A, and this is giving you a general idea of what's going on, but there's a lot of options if you're using a square tube frame rail, if you're using like Molly or whatever. So here is. So here's close to what we'll be running kind of right here. All of these have different things depending on like where the driver's helmet sits and if you sit back behind the main bar and all this type of stuff. The biggest thing I want to look at is this red bar right here and what size it's supposed to be because I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be bigger than this and that's why we're going to cut this one out. Now that we're going to the funny car cage, it needs a stronger bar for this portion of it. And I think we're actually going to lower the bar some so then it actually gives us more clearance if we want to put anything back kind of in that area or whatever we're doing for things like race week and all that. Maybe that's a place where we put a suitcase or something. Who knows? I'm sure we'll be pulling the trailer with it, but let's check this out. As you guys can tell here, the back bar that I'm talking about now is red and it matches also what this door bar is. So that kind of gives you an idea. This is inch and five eighths and this isn't. So we need to replace this bar. I think it's an inch and a half with an inch and five eighths bar. So this bar does have to come out and then we will not be needing these because we're gonna have the crossbar that goes around like we talked about. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all this out. If you look right here, it says inch and five eighths, 083 wall chromoly. If it was mild steel, that's where you'd be. But mild steel cages are maximum of a 750 certain cage. So what this car is going to, you could do a mild steel, but that would be max and it's a heavier cage because you gotta go with a thicker wall. See, on Molly, you can be an 083, mild still a 0.118 wall thickness. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Let's throw some more Molly bars in this thing after we get these cut out. All right, time to put one of our favorite tools to work, the little saw saw. So scratch that, we went through about one and a half blades to get that far through one bar. Let's go get some cutoff, Wizzy. I guess so. I guess so. Note to self, Salza, Chromali, not so good, unless you got some really good blades, but I thought those were pretty good blades before, but Chromali, not so much. Boy, does that go a lot faster. We're almost there. seconds about 14 minutes <laughs> so what we did talk to my dad about and stuff is he says on the molly if you're outside the heat affected zone it definitely cuts easier he's done a lot more of this stuff so uh but hey cut off wheel don't care where the heat affected zone is so that's what we went with cut here cut there cut there cut there we'll be good to go
What happened? Well, you try to cut at weird angles and sometimes you send sparks to yourself, even though you know you're going to do it. You're like, ah, oh, maybe I can get by with it. No, not so much. So is this one of those scenarios where you tell everybody <laughs> when you build a cage, build it right the first time so that way you don't do this? No, nah, it got built right the first time, but then the car ended up going a lot faster than I expected it to, so here we are. That's disassembly of your roll cage that you once had and that was certified, and now it isn't. <laughs> so we'll get these all cleaned up on the ends, polish them back to the tube real easy, and then we'll start putting new bars in here. And I mean, this is pretty much all we had to do is get those out. We might be able to reuse some of that tube depending on where we're at. I don't know if actually, I think this may work. Let's see. Let's see. Yep. Should be up. There's a good chance we can actually notch that. I think the dash bar can be an uh, inch and a half. So I think we can probably cut that and notch that. So that bar will end up becoming the new dash bar. So that saves us some material there. These really aren't going to be too much. Maybe the gussets, depending on what size that it is, to go from here down to the uh, subframe connectors underneath. Maybe we can use some of this molly for those. So we'll use it where we can use it and uh, fit it where we can fit it. Fresh unit. Thoughts? <laughs> Welcome to fabrication. No. Uh, so yeah, got it. All but these little guys down here and over here. Got these mostly cleaned up, and then trying to just polish it around the tube, and then we'll decide where the new tubes are going to come over once we start to install them. But just trying to get everything cleaned up for now. So I guess I got some more grinding to do, so I don't cut my ankle now. But uh, Alex and I were discussing that. We're trying to decide, do we cut this plate off or whatever, but then you probably end up cutting through the body because it's super thin. So we're probably just gonna sand this thing down, uh, make it flush, and then just probably leave these little plates in here. Maybe it becomes a little mount for something or whatever, who knows, but leave them for now and uh, mess with it later. I think that's pretty much where we need to be to start adding bars back to it. So in the next video, we're going to get those subframe connectors cleaned up a little bit on the bottom side, I guess. Maybe I might do that with the grinder still yet today. And then we can start by putting the subframe connectors on and then start building and putting bars in here. So if you guys want to see more on this cage build, actually building it instead of disassembling it like we did in this video, hit the subscribe button. Come back for the next video. We'll see you guys later.